Und guten Tag. Guten Tag. Hi. <laughs> That's about as much of my German that I remember from high school. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's your name? Could you introduce yourself? So my name is Daryl Wharton Rigby, and I am a filmmaker from the United States, but I am currently now living in Japan. Where, where do you live in Japan? I'm in Saitama, Japan. Oh, okay. Yeah. How so, long have you been in Japan? Um, I've been in Japan on and off for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see, I initially was, when I lived, started living in Japan, I initially was living in Fukushima. Fukushima, so, okay. Yeah, in a small town called uh, Kawamata. Mm. Kawamata Machi in Fukushima, Ken. Mm. Um, as a filmmaker, um, like how how did you like start your career in Japan? Well, it, well, my career in Japan really started in the U.S. Okay. Um, mm. because I started actually filmmaking in the United States, mm. and I'm originally from the state of Maryland, and my hometown is called Baltimore. And I started making films in Baltimore and then, you know, made a feature film in my hometown and then moved to Los Angeles. And, you know, I had written also for television in the US. Um, and then when I was living in Los Angeles, I was hired by MTV to write a screenplay based on a manga. Mm -hmm. And that was my first time coming to Japan. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I was really interested in learning more about Japan and Japanese life and culture. And so I came back as an English teacher. Hmm. And so I actually started off, you know, I was a, you know, I am a filmmaker, you know, and then came to Japan and started teaching English. But my, I was supposed to only be here for a year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long are you in Japan now? <laughs> now, now, you know, well, I'm almost 15. So, yeah. you know, it's been a, it's been a good life journey. So, you know, so basically I started off, I came to Japan as a filmmaker. Mm. Um, and so I didn't really start here. You know, I've even, you know, even started working on a documentary while I was in Fukushima as well. Mm. Okay. And so, yeah, so I started as a filmmaker. So when I came to Japan, you know, Japan, and after, you know, I moved here, you know, pretty much full time, then I was looking for ways to actually make a film while I was here. Mm -hmm. What is the difference of uh, shooting a film in Japan compared to the US? Um, I think the biggest difference is that it's not really totally 100% different. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, especially outside of like language barriers and that sort of thing, the rules are pretty much the same yeah okay. in terms of what to do like i know you know like in this in you know here you if you put down the tripod then you really probably would you know you'll need a permit mm. but if you kind of go handheld it's you know you don't really need to have the permit kind of thing um so you kind of find the way of figuring out which ways to work and you know i think culturally there may be some things that different you know like Usually in, I think what I've noticed here is that if there's a plan, people yeah. will stick only to the plan. Yeah, yeah. For that yeah. day. Whereas if you, in the States, if something happens that you have to make adjustments in your plan, mm. people are very flexible, say, okay, we're going to make a change because we have to, you know, because this has happened, we have to make this adjustment. So we have to change the plan right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, do what we have to do to get what we need mm -hmm. to make it happen. And so I think that in, a, in some ways, I think shooting in the States is a little bit more flexible in terms of how do you go about your day? Mm -hmm. Whereas in Japan, you know, crews are expect, you know, they expect that, okay, this is the plan, this is what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. And then things kind of get a little bit chaotic if you deviate from the plan. Ah, oh, I see. Uh, how much do you script? Um, as a, I'm, well, I'm initially, Actually, I started as a writer. Oh, okay. So, you know, as a, you know, so for me, writing is always the, um, the foundation for anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so, you know, I've been writing screenplays since I was, what, 17, 18 years old. Oh, okay. That's and, so interesting. Yeah. And so 
for me, I'm, you know, I always tell folks I'm a writer, director, and producer, and it's always in that order. <laughs> <laughs> writer first, director, and then producer. Mm. Because for me, it always starts with a good script and trying to make sure that the script is as the, you know, it's the best story that you can tell. Mm. And then as a director, you want to see and visualize how you can tell that particular story mm. that's in the script. And then as a producer, you have to figure out how can we execute the vision that you want to make? <laughs> and, it, and then, so it's like, you always have, is those, you know, it's like you have different hats mm. and in wearing the different hats, you sometimes do come into conflict. Mm, yeah. Because as a director, I may have an idea, but as a producer, I'm like, you can't afford it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then you have to figure out how do you, but how do you, how can you still make it happen and still fit the vision. Mm. But initially it always starts with trying to write a good and compelling story initially. Yeah, I feel also storytelling is very important on YouTube as well. Yeah. I feel like uh, it's, it's a younger platform. So the first like few seconds and also like the final, that's where like I try to. <laughs> no, no, but, yeah, and yeah, I think I, that and I think even with, you know, with even with YouTube or now with TikTok, with TikTok, yeah, TikTok as well. Yeah, you have to find your audience and you have to capture your audience, but you also have to have, I think it's a, a thing where you also have to have consistent output and it's consistent. Yeah. Content. Yeah. And as well, like, uh, as I said, about story is so important because I feel right. like I have like, a, even if I have 20 minutes of footage, right. Like, if I cut it down to like two minutes, that's the video which get the most views. Yeah. So like it's it's difficult to like make a quality like keep the listener interested for a longer time. Right. Yeah. You know, and it's all about trying to figure out how can I get eyeballs to come to mm -hmm. my you know my page or my you know my website or mm -hmm. my streaming service. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and right now everybody's trying to figure out how can we get people to see us. Mm -hmm. How much do you cut or like what's your style when cutting or how do you learn editing? Um, well, learning editing, I think, is a trial, trial and error process. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I'm I don't I can edit, but I don't I don't put myself out as an editor. Yeah. OK. I like to work with an editor because I think there are a lot of people who can do it a whole lot better than me. Mm -hmm. And because I think film is is a collaborative process mm. where you, you get the chance to work with a lot of different people who know and do things a lot better than you can, mm. then it's a great way that we all can collaborate. So I, you know, I like to work with an editor, mm. but I understand editing, you know, so that when I'm working with an editor, I can communicate. Oh uh, yeah, that's important, yeah. And, you know, so, you know, if I ask, you know, if I talk to my editor and say, hey, let's do a jump cut, they know what I mean, or, you know, if I say, let's do this, or the, you know, so if I'm looking for something, then you create, you can create a shorthand with an editor that, you know, I think if you're beginning, you know, if you don't have editing experience, mm. it does, you know, it, you have to kind of be a little bit more specific and long winded, I think at times. Yeah, yeah. But okay. I think, you know, and I think the thing about editing is you have to keep, you just have to edit to learn mm -hmm. editing you know, and try new stuff, try something different, see what works, see what doesn't work. Um, I think, you know, that the most important thing about editing is also, if you're doing a narrative story, is about emotion. Yeah, okay. Mm. You know, because you can, if you cut on the, emo you know, for emotion, then your audience will be with you. Mm. You know, whereas, you know, and it's kind of like, I think, you know, there's a famous editor, Walter Murch, who kind of has a delineation about percentages of like emotion and continuity mm -hmm. and these other things. And certain things do wind up being a lot more important than others. Mm -hmm. And you'll see them being used by other films and filmmakers because I've seen films where the continuity didn't necessarily match, mm -hmm. but the emotion was there. You don't really pay attention to the continuity. Oh, okay. And so, the, you know, so those kind of rules or those kind of things, I think, help to create a, you know, 
a language, mm. and a, you know, a visual language that we can all follow and that we can all use. Mm. And we didn't, and then we find our own way to use them mm. in our own work. You talk about like storytelling. So like, how do you make like an um, emotional story or how do you catch the emotions? Ooh, I, you know, I think the thing is you, as a storyteller, you try to find out what connects with you. Mm. And how do you can how can you make it as personal for yourself as possible? Mm. How do you find your own way into the story in terms of characters? Um, and so, so for me, it's about really you know when you're writing, you have to find a kind of your own way in. So if I'm writing a story about you know any character, I got to find out what is it about me that I can use mm. to connect with this character. Mm. And you know, what is it about this character that why do I care and why would my audience care? Mm. And so if you can find that way in, then that I think helps to tell a compelling story because now you're trying to find, because you're looking for what connects us in terms of our humanity anyway. Mm, yeah. And so if you're connecting us from, a, you know, with our, you know, your, our common humanity, then I think that's when you start to find the, the connection, the connecting and the connective tissue, so to speak, mm -hmm. that keeps us all, you know, binds us all. You talk about characters. How do you find actors or locations to shoot in Japan? Um, well, for my film Stay, I actually had met my lead actor, Shogun. Mm. And we met at a, uh, at, at a screening. Oh. And we talked and we had, you know, conversations and I told him about the, you know, the movie I wanted to do and, you know, mm. sent it to him. And then he was like, okay, I like this. I want to, let's do it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then from there, we, when we, you know, when we started actually then going into the process and looking for mm. Hope's character, I think we looked for, we looked at, I know I looked at probably more than a thousand actresses. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we put stuff on, you know, um, Actors Access and all the, you know, online acting sites. And a lot of actresses submitted. <laughs> yeah. And then you had to filter. <laughs> yeah. And you had to kind of go through and, you know, through all of the actresses. And, and the thing is, there are a lot of talented people out there. Mm. And so that always makes it tough. And then, you know, but for us, we eventually landed on um, Anna, mm. Anna Tanaka, who plays Hope. And because the thing is, Anna A, she brought, you know, some skills and, you know, a certain quality to the character. Mm. But also she had a really great chemistry with Shogun, mm. which I think is also very important when you're, you know, when you're making a film, if your cast doesn't gel, Mm. You know, the audience, the audience has to also believe that they are a couple mm. and that they, you know, that they would be together. And so we wanted, you know, so Anna, you know, and Shogun had such a really lovely chemistry together that it just it was like, the, you know, it's like we knew it was like, OK, that's the choice. She's the one. OK. <laughs> and and, and you mentioned and locations is always a challenge because when you're doing a low budget film, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you have to ask for favors. <laughs> and then sometimes you have to ask for forgiveness. <laughs> um, like, what, what do you think is good about like uh, filmmaking in Japan? One more, one more time? What is good about making films in Japan? I enjoy it because A, you know, Japan is just such a visually stunning place to film at times. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that you know, filming here, there's always something around the corner that you don't expect or you don't, you know, and so you can find something that is different or unique. Mm. Um, an interesting, you know, thing when we, when we filmed Stay, we didn't, one of the, you know, the rules was for me was, I don't want to shoot anything that feels touristy. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, because I, you know, because of the main character, he's, he lives in Tokyo. Mm. He lives in Japan. So he's not going to be going to Shibuya Scramble or, yeah. 
with Skytree or Tokyo Tower, you know, he's not going to go to the touristy places. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it was about how do we shoot this film in a way that it feels like his world. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you go to the small ramen shops, mm -hmm. you know, you go to the, the, the you know, the, the, the little cafe restaurants, mm -hmm. you know, places where, you know, the locals would kind of go, mm -hmm. you know, you go to the small markets. Mm -hmm. And so go to the conveni, mm -hmm. you know, everybody goes to the conveni. And so it was about trying to have a more local feel mm -hmm. for the story and for the film as opposed to trying to make it feel like, oh, we're in Japan. No, it's, we're already here. We know this, we know the main character is Japanese. We don't have to show the sky tree or <laughs> any of the, you know, cause usually like, I work on a lot of other productions and you know, you can almost, you could probably make a list of 20 places that most people already want to film. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, when they say, oh, I want to go you know that they want to try to go to the Shibuya scramble or they want to do something, they want to get the Tokyo Tower or the Sky Tree or, you know, Harajuku, mm. you know, <laughs> you know, so the, you know, like you could literally make a list mm. of places where you know that they're going to want to go. Um, and so it's always, you know, it's always more surprising when you find something that's not on the list. Mm. You know, and you go, oh, okay, okay, they, they've done some homework or, you know, they've done a little research. Sometimes I get emails by, um, right now, not because of coroners, but by foreign um, companies. And when they want to shoot in Japan, they're sometimes looking for an interpreter. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, they, because I'm located in Osaka, they always ask me for Kyoto. <laughs> uh, yes. And they always want to go to the different shrines and temples. and. Yeah, but it's interesting. Sometimes they want to make uh, um, a small documentary about like how to make tea in Japan or something like that. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, it's and then cute. They, <laughs> and you have to find the tea house. and. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So it's I a process. Have... Yeah, after many years of living in Japan, what do you enjoy the most about being here? Being home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a family here. So, you know, mm -hmm. if I'm just home relaxing and mm. in the yard or doing some barbecue, mm. to me, that's, you know, pretty much the best part. You know, it's just being at home and relaxed. Mm. You know, because, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's all about, you know, finding your own little piece of heaven. <laughs> mm. and you know so if when i'm home i'm just home you know i don't have to worry about much mm. you know you know and i and i and you know and unfortunately I, because i also teach to as you know in terms of my working mm. you know my work allows me to travel a little bit mm -hmm. so i get to see the country a lot mm. and i get to learn more about the country and the culture and you know and that mm. sort of thing so that's also you know a great part about you know for me being here is that mm -hmm. i've you know i've traveled a lot around you know japan from you know i've been to osaka i've been to mm -hmm. kyoto hiroshima kumoto um you know you know hokkaido mm -hmm. and you know but you know but also fukushima miyagi you know so like so you've been to i've been to a lot of the prefectures mm -hmm. not all yet but <laughs> And it's been, you know, so that's the great thing about being able to be here and travel and, you know, mm. and just, and you, and the more you travel, the more you learn. Mm. Yeah. And, you know, and, but the one thing you all, you come to realize at the end of the day, and I'm kind of paraphrasing poet Maya Angelou, you know, we are all alike, we're more alike than different, mm. you know, and that's the one thing you realize, like, no matter where you go, we're all still more alike than we are different. So thank you very much for your time. And if every if anyone is interested, um, like I put like information um, okay. um, down under the video in the description, please. Sure, sure, sure. So thank you so much for your time. Bye. No, no, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.